Hello, welcome. This is the Daily Dharma, and my name is Dina. Thank you so much for joining. Today we're just going to do this timeless collective reading, see what wants to come out. At 11 seconds, we have the Divine Feminine popping out with magic. Let's see, there's the magic card. Oops. 21, 22, 21, and 31. So there's a magical divine feminine or a, a feminine who is using her magical capacity, exploring her, her potential in that way. And that can also be, it's genderless. So if you're the masculine, it's the emotional capacity, your capacity to nurture people and to create magical outcomes. So it says the frequency of magic supports our intrinsic ability to grow and expand beyond this moment, to move towards possibilities and expressions that are as grand and profound as we can imagine. All that is required is our belief in their manifestation. So this is like um, something that's very appealing to our sensibilities, our sensitivities, to our sense of what makes us feel like like home feels magical it feels restorative rejuvenating so oh and the next coming out is 33 miracle that's nice beautiful so using your magic to create miracles the frequency of miracles supports our belief in ourselves as a part of source and therefore our belief that anything is possible yeah, somebody's really working it. And perception, there's a shift in your perception. Maybe somebody has inspired your magical abilities recently. The frequency of perception supports our natural curiosity, moving us beyond our comfort zone to find the edges of what we perceive as real and to take a good, hard, deep look at it. Let's get one more here. Empowerment. So, okay, empowered perception tells me that we've been having a lot of solar plexus, a lot of us. Well, we've had a lot of chakra cards. But I'm seeing empowered perception is perceiving of magic all around us and the miracle of life, the miracles of nature surrounding us and people and perspectives and witnessing past, present, and future as some kind of a, a continuum that has no beginning, no end. I know that might sound a little bit out there. So under the deck we have 28 Gaia and passion and change. Okay? Very interesting. So, what else? Throat chakra, compassion, and belief. Transition. Okay, transition, change, alchemy, and integration. Okay, so there's a very deep change that's happened at, uh, throughout the journey of our life, softening our compassionate expression. Very interesting. Let's get some of the other cards out here and see where this wants to go. So something is changing, something that feels like home. So we've been looking into a new potential, new pos prosperity emerging in our life. We've had a lot of... Um, a lot of romantic love and universal love for a whole section there too. So this feels like an ongoing story here. In fact, I don't necessarily want to go to this just yet. I'm feeling like there's something here. Divine Feminine. You know, since Divine Feminine's on the deck, let's move into the Kuan Yin and the Kali decks real quick to find out what we want to talk about as far as the divine feminine like we had yesterday's was allowing our creative force the release of resistance allowing creative juices to flow through us and now witnessing that is expanding our sense of self our self-worth 
creating more magic and more miracles in our life and we're perceiving a strengthening of our influence in the world in some kind of capacity. In passion with Gaia and change, it's as if we've all been on some kind of a, a soul mission, a soul journey, trying to awaken our deepest passions towards some type of mission that is for all of human humanity in some type of a way here. And it seems like it has to do a lot with trust, Trusting our own capacity and potential, however, however out there. And okay, um, how do I say this? Somebody's magic has been um, underestimated by others that don't necessarily believe in magic, and your ability or whoever this is, their ability to trust in their own magical capacity has opened up new avenues and. New doors are opening that weren't open before because you're being assisted to walk towards your passion now. So the card coming out from Kuan Yin is the 16 Maiden Magu oh, and Mother Fierce under the deck. So checking out these postures here. Mother Fierce, first of all, the 18. She talks about being safe, provided for, protected, secure, and the flames and fires of her passionate devotion is like that asteroid mythological goddess Vesta, the Vestal Virgin, as we always say, isn't about never having an interlude, it's about remaining innocent and keeping that inner passion alive and under passion I'm just noticing I passion was stuck to communication so there's a change of passionate communication coming through perhaps from someone or some type of new venture or opportunity that's may whether it's headhunting or wanting to engage in these passions with you some type of a mission maybe you're gathering together with other people that are on a similar trajectory and you're being told that your interests will be will be um, protected and if others are so-called coming for you your ancestors the powers that be are watching your back for you providing a lot of protection I saw 808 just there what goes around comes around, so keep your vibe high. Maiden Magu here, I, I, for whatever reason, can never remember what the intention of this card is. I always see this as someone, an innocent maiden, because we have maiden, and then we just talked about Vesta, someone who has maintained their sense of purity and... And there's also this ma, always remem reminds me of um, a matured, so maiden and mothering on the same card. And, and we have mother and maiden here together, so this may be generational, it be, may be grandmother, mother, daughter type lines, or they these people in your life, maybe you have a... Um, even if you're the masculine, you may have a, a wife and child that may be in this, in this scenario here. But the, the Maiden Magu one it always reminds me of someone who is... It always reminds me of someone who's holding something back, like that Four of Cups energy in the tarot. How she's saying, oh, well, I have this, but this isn't for just anyone. She's holding something back for who it's meant for and talking about purity and maiden and motherhood It's and the flowers around her in that basket. It's almost like holding out from being intimate with someone and that could be emotional intimacy. It can be 
a child who's maybe even hitting adolescence and keeping a little bit more to themselves these days, it's like, you know, before they may run up to you for snuggles and now they're, they almost seem kind of suspicious at 1010. I think that kids are just like that for the most part, so you have to use your discernment. We've been talking about fair and equal governance and governing not with the strong arm, but with um, less rules and more more love. Of course, you'll know your situation the best, but I'm feeling that that whether that's yourself or your child, there's some kind of a, a holding back or it could be um, a love interest. There's some type of distance and I think that that's okay. There's a little bit of restraint it feels like just healthy boundaries and working through some trust issues to me. But by withholding the appropriate amount, it's empowering your magical capacity and your perception of your of your contribution to the mission, whatever mission that you've got going on here. Okay, let's see what Kylie has to say here. So we're getting protection, and yeah, I'm feeling that maiden is whoever is viewing here, but again, take it as it resonates, and that mother feels like ancestors, a mother in spirit, a grandmother in spirit, or just ancestors in general, because we have many faces and many hands helping out there. All right, we have one flying right off the deck. We've been getting this one a lot under the deck. Lalita Tripura Sandari. I'm sorry for butchering these names, guys. So I'm seeing she has her golden throne. She's making her mutra with the thumb and the, the ring finger, second to last there. And she kind of looks like she's dancing. She seems to me like she's dynamic, more like um, swaying the hips back and forth is what I'm kind of seeing her doing. Um, it's almost... Where am I going with that? I'm seeing some type of a like flowing with the energies and having fun with the energies as they come and not diving in right away to the first thing that comes your way, but dancing. Oh, and even if this is romance or in negotiations of some type of other contract, like work contract or whatever else, um, some type of a business venture, this is kind of like the energies ebb and flow in between each other, yin-yang, yin-yang, and allow for people to compromise and the negotiation process, the learning process in, in relationships, it's the the opening process, the the dance of seduction, that willing surrender versus the eh, maybe not today type thing here. Um, and the same thing with our teenagers, if that's a real thing, or your parents. You know, aging parents can act sometimes the same as they always did for better or for worse, and sometimes they act much different, and their personality can change due to illness or or medication or whatever else. And um, I'm seeing this a little bit of a longing for connection between the mother line, the feminine line. So reach out for that. Maybe your teenager is being aloof because they're not sure how to ask for the affection they really do want. Kamala De Devi. She looks a lot more stoic, and that appears to be, to me, um... Well, I'm seeing both of these people in the Kali deck are friendly, open, aware. They're watcher energies. They're looking at a situation, but the Kamala one seems to be lost in reverie. Her eyes are not focused in the present, where Lalita, here under the deck, is very present. But both of them have that large hoop nose ring and some and some similar similar jewelry, I just want to say, because they have both this flaming type of a headdress, the third eye, 
earrings, the nose ring. So I've been really enjoying reading these and I'm noticing under the deck we have Mother Fierce is 18 and under the deck Lolita is 18. So 1 plus 8 is 9 and it's the number of the moon in the major arcana. Um, any other synchronicities? Major, or excuse me, master number 33 is out. Passion is 34. Very neat. Okay, I love the synchronicities. Okay, I do want to read these Cali ones because they're so good. I'm in the wrong book. Bear with me, folks. Okay, Lolita under the deck. With luminous grace, she plays her ways into our hearts, softening hardness and despair, awakening the remembrance of light, love, and joy. No matter what you've experienced, your heart shall be cleansed and released from ugliness, sorrow, and pain. Negative karmic legacies will be cleared away. Our divine sister goddess invites you to recognize her golden restorative beauty shining within your heart. Cultivate that which is worthy of such beauty, for this is your essential nature. Gracefully release all else with dignity. And I do feel like if there's some kind of an, a bit of an estrangement, a bit of aloofness in the interactions here, and it was 1616 when I was starting that thought and looked up, which is the number of Maiden Magu, somebody who is taking their time, uh, gracefully release everything but beauty with dignity. There's some type of dignity. So maybe for some of you, you'll know your situations better, but there's some type of a situation also for others that has been challenging that may have less for you than you thought that you had to cut ties with or stand your ground with and invoke your spiritual protection here. And you've been pulling back your love from that yourself, perhaps, feeling like you're the undying spark of light, love, and all of this luminous grace may be triggering to other individuals, but you are being protected. So if there's any negative karmic legacy, especially operating within your family dynamic, whether or not it has bled over into your romantic relationships or your workplace or your friendships, um, release everything that isn't essential or that cultivate that which is worthy of such beauty for this is your essential nature gracefully release all else with dignity very nice and then so we've got this stoic reverie here with the other card and this one keeps coming up as well we witness her beauty in all struggle melts into grace upon a grateful sigh the heart softens into her protection and radiates peace her presence transforms frustration into inspiration fatigue into replenishment, and overactivity into effortless attraction. She is the golden pathway of divine manifestation and peaceful contentment. She empowers your heart to receive with the same generosity, openness, and grace that you express when you give freely and joyfully. Abundant divine blessings are upon you. So yeah, there's definitely something about this restraint withholding one situation where you're called to use your discernment and and pull back where someone is and another where uh, you're being told to use your discernment to soften your energies and move into a new direction that way so a couple cards popping out here falling angel spiritual narcolepsy number 19 that's a progression from those 18. So you can't quite see this card, can you? Spiritual narcolepsy coming out over divine feminine and magic. Perhaps there's a time where you were highly engaged with your magic, practicing whatever craft, whatever healing. You were engaged with your mission. You were on point and going in a certain direction. And maybe the situations, um, drama in the family or friends, or or maybe you, you had a financial burden that took precedence over the pandemic or something it's different for everybody but life somehow may have gotten in the way and there was maybe a shutting down or a brief bounce or slipping backsliding back into this unconsciousness and you're just witnessing now 
the impact of the choices that have led you here. 20 is very nice. It's that judgment energy. And it's 19 and 20 coming out together. 20 is the feast of plenty. Choices and their consequences. So yeah, this um, trust your judgment when to give and when not to. There's this empowered perception that brings your miracles right to your door not allowing your magical sensibilities to be exploited or under undervalued don't doubt your your value other people don't understand don't need to understand your magic in order for it to work you're the invoker so choices and their consequences so using your magic for the correct avenue towards the, the highest possible good is going to keep you reaping your miracles. It's going to keep clarifying and clearing out those old perceptions and any negative karma that has falsely influenced us or acted as some kind of coping mechanism in the past. We have plenty of... of um, experience under our belt I'm hearing to to make an educated choice and we're not as vulnerable to the consequences when we're in our truth and integrity and keeping ourselves in the up and up with our pro protecting ourselves and not stupidly giving to people that would just exploit take or undermine in another way or whatever right so this feast of plenty seems like the consequences, it seems like Dharma. I mean, this is the daily Dharma, right? <clears throat> Feast of Plenty is like, and it's coming out over magic and miracles. Because of the intentionality and because of your boundaries and your insight, I'm seeing this crystal ball as clarity, insight, you looking into the future and asking your ancestors to provide an, um, an opening for those essences that serve and for creating barriers against those that would come to harm 22-22 I absolutely do that because sometimes my my empathic innocent heart wants to give to everyone especially if they have children because I've been there and I can relate to that and so I want to give but not everyone that is in need is actually going to go and better themselves and if we're giving so much of ourselves that we don't have enough at the end of the day while that person is taking from 10 people that don't have enough and then never doing anything with it we're not actually helping we're enabling most of us know this and this card says that our judgment in the past it has served many and yes the energy about putting up those boundaries on the energetic level I call that my gatekeeper. I use my higher self, which I see this card too as the higher selves behind here, the ancestors, the spirit guides, whatever you um, invoke to assist with your clarity and your choosing and your protection. I'm seeing that, that two of swords here going through this clarity and it's like, uh, help me to to protect my energies and if I should accidentally invite someone who doesn't mean my highest good step in and don't allow them to find my place don't allow them to drive to my place you know in that way they may have car troubles they may have um, somebody come and visit where they can't leave the house or something this is just a general situation but what I'm not trying to ask any negative situations upon them I'm asking if they don't mean well to my energy I allow spirit source universal forces to intervene on my behalf to serve my highest possible good and you can do that as well number six Cosmic womb has been coming out. So I can see this with miracle and perception above. You're seeing uh, 
it looks like there's a miraculous development coming into your life that you're just starting to see and to witness wanting to trust not sure the implications there's this um not push and pull but a like tipping your toe in the water that's what i want to say type energy here where you've been in your chrysalis for a while uh licking your wounds whatever situation you've been protecting yourself from and restraining your your over giving energy perhaps from has maybe allowed you or your fear complexes to to kind of keep you from taking some risks I'm feeling so there's good and bad in this but you have generated an enormous amount of potential here as you have kind of withdrawn you've drawn all of your energy all of your magic all of your essence back into yourself and you have plenty so now spirit is asking you to step forth and share that you've taken your time into your cave I'm seeing that dragon energy that keeps coming out and you're perceiving your ability to kind of come out of hiding to create the miracles that are ready to that are ready to work with you there's this new beginning and here you are floating up you're ready to pierce through your hand is pushing through you you see and sense the way forward and you're moving in the right direction is what I'm hearing under the deck, we keep getting this card too, mindful, group think. So there's definitely a difference between being a mindful thinker and a full mind going on all the time. It's that chaos without any type of organization. Like I've, I've seen different people that every time they think of something, they're like, oh, I'll be right back. And so 10 times when they're trying to eat their supper, they're jumping up and doing things that have no bearing on that moment. It's like sometimes you need to just relax and and write a, a list. And sometimes those lists don't help people that have that full mind. But you've got to decompress because the reason you're afraid that everything's going to be missed is because you're concentrating on too many scattered different directions at once. And there's with that mind full, you have the you're being advised to as much as possible divide and conquer so in within that to balance those things out so um, if you spend your entire day working on one thing and then nothing else is done but now you've got to leave and so you haven't you know even changed your clothes and you've got to go to some fancy thing it's like losing track of time there's this clock in the background there's music in the background musical notes and a carousel and a key and a keyhole <clears throat> so it's like reassess your reasons for busyness are you distracting yourself from some type of processing your grief are you trying to distract yourself with other people's agendas you're um, overworking or <clears throat> helping serving others instead of serving yourself all of those things come through but even even when there's that <clears throat> excuse me the opportunity to do that it's asking us to come back to center and use our mind to how do I want to even say this I mean not everybody knows what mindfulness is it's thinking about your thoughts it's having compassion behind the thoughts like like the dinner example have enough compassion with yourself to recognize that if you're hungry you need to sit down and eat and if you're burning more calories than you're taking in because you're not sitting down and eating your body's going to be constantly in a state of over exertion stress which creates the hormone cortisol which actually it lessens our metabolism it increases our our fear responses it lessens our coping potential it lessens and reduces the amount of testosterone men and women both have testosterone and that is related to our alpha instincts our ability to go out to feel confident and to 
assert ourselves to create and to to be who and what we're supposed to be, right? So so that um, cortisol is it's um, there was something else I wanted to say about that as well. It's a stress response and fear frequency living. And oh, shallow breathing was what I wanted to say. So as I take my big slug of water, I'm just reminded we need to we need to hydrate and we need to deep breathe. And sometimes when I get excited or when I get upset, I start shallow breathing. We all do that. It's um a triggered response. And so if you find yourself stressed out don't reach for a cigarette. Don't reach for um, the phone to complain and vent to other individuals. First, take a moment to release the idea that somebody cutting you off in traffic is a big deal or that your computer crashing during Mercury retrograde has any bearing on the rest of your day. If it's not time to, to mess with your computer, you just need to walk away from it yesterday after the Daily Dharma, I did, I'll have you know, an amazing job for an hour and 15 minutes recording uh, you versus them for every sign. I got all the way through Capricorn and my video, or my device turned off and didn't record my videos. So it wasn't the message that needed to be delivered that day, right? So it was frustrating. I mean, I'm not going to say I wasn't hoping, wishing, and praying that it was still going to record but I trust the process. I trust that if I'm delayed in traffic, that it's okay if I arrive five minutes late. You can't, you can't live your life woulda, coulda, shoulda. I mean, you're where you're at. You can only go forward from where you're at. And if you're constantly concerned and bringing anxiety up and dwelling on it and reveling in it and sharing it forward with everybody else, this is you falling backwards into that spiritual narcolepsy. Just take everything in stride. It's easier said than done, but practice makes better. Underneath mindful and group think, we have skywriting, the fates. So you are um, you're being told that there's something very intentional that you're being aligned with. So whatever you're trying to work for or work towards, if it's a mission, if it's a relationship, if it's a contract, whatever it is, uh, it's written in the fates. Uh, there's some kind of Bible verse that I've heard. What um, is yours, nobody can take from you. And if it's not yours, you can't take it from for nothing, right? It, and that totally puts everything up to destiny. I know that we have to create our own destiny in, destiny in many ways as well. But it's like something is written in the in the sky and spirit and mother fierce over here whoever that is whatever that essence is uh, delays are also in our favor just as much as acceleration there's times for both there's to everything there's a season turn 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 right so good to be hydrated 33, 33. <clears throat> All right, let's get some of these and we will be done. Yeah, there's some new beginnings coming in. It's like we're, we've spent our time deciphering. We've spent our time doing these boundary exercises and I'm not taking this big chunk. And we're being told that we had that transition card over there. The more that we allow right now, there are, something's coming in. We're getting a message that we've been waiting to hear about something we've been working on for a while. There's a transformation, a change in perception that's going on with whoever you're dealing with, um, a softening of resistance. Somebody, somebody was doubting or falling asleep or engaging in in bad behavior here but people are coming back into their integrity and it's creating the miracle you've been waiting for so we have sending a message here we have communication on the board already um, material concerns 
blockage, scarcity limits. Somebody was afraid that you were, that somebody was going to take what was theirs, for sure here, because then I'm getting that. And if it's not yours in particular, it may not be. Every message won't resonate. There's some, some kind of monkey face on this group think card. And it's reminding me of flying monkeys, which was a term from Wizard of Oz. And some people use it for narcissists when they start to draw other people into the situation. And they send their, their people after you, the people that they've told what to believe. Enlighten your energy. So that's lightening your energy through enlightenment and through play, joy, and humor. Perfect. I wasn't at my best learning lessons. We've been getting that. But there's a miracle here coming through. Somebody has been obsessed. An Aquarius or a Libra may be involved. There's change, and somebody wants to be free from this situation. There's been blockages. In, uh, okay. Somebody's building confidence, working on themselves, clearing their space and energy for that. Somebody remained calm while another was upset. Cutting cords and releasing. Some of these cards keep coming out day after day, so we may be telling just an ongoing story. Reassess your reasons for busyness. Prioritize your goals. And then you see that stop sign is kind of rounded and it says go, go, go. It's like, you know, twisting a bolt over and over and over again and just continuing to wrench on it even though we have the wrong size of um, whatever, or like a screwdriver and a screw head, and it's like getting rounded in the hole because we're just continuing to do the same thing. It's like you're getting worn down and you're not paying attention. Maybe you don't feel like anything that you do is ever enough. Gaslighting and manipulation, look deeper. Maybe you're feeling victimized and you go, go, go because you don't think anybody else will do it the right way. Maybe you need to release some control and delegate to your children or your loved ones. It says, I love deep conversations, air, air signs. Goat, highly protected and favored by the divine. That one came out for a few signs yesterday. Opening up revelation, legit. Ooh. And then we've got somebody who's blocking something here, as we've already seen. But you are a demon slayer or mother fierces. Somebody was just trying to get a reaction. Somebody who possibly is addicted, self-medicates, so they're not feeling clear anyways. They're definitely under spiritual narcolepsy, but there's loyalty here, whether it's family, friends, marriage. Um, somebody has been repressed, and they don't feel that they've been getting equal give and take and sharing, and I'm definitely re-feeling that money issue, but there's balance coming with the sixes, so guard your mind. So, anything else? Take that one. Venus energies. That will soften matters potentially in romance, relationships, and finance. Does this align with your highest path? Get down to the root of the issue and ground your energies into, into the earth. And then we're getting Cancer, Soulmate, Evil Eye, Return to Sender. And secret admirer 4444 completion leveling up for a workaholic. It's time to take a romantic adventure, especially if you're a Hayoka empath needing to heal. Have patience, allow the unfolding, and know that it's safe to be yourself. Your third eye chakra is being called out, especially from the full moon. There's chemistry with the Taurus who's perhaps been holding back like that maiden Magoo there. But they see you in, in their future, and um, yeah, it might be a little bit distant. Somebody may be um, watching. Yes. All right. I'll get you a down message. Because these are kind of, um, I didn't feel a consistent storyline. It felt like confirmations for several different people, so take which ones are yours. Number nine, fill your bowl to the brim and it will spill. Keep sharpening your knife and it will blunt. 
Chase after money and security, and your heart will never unclench. Care about people's approval, and you will be their prisoner. Do your work, then step back. The only path to serenity. Right, this is all, okay, that's the common denominator here for sure. So, there's that feast of plenty, as if somebody has plenty, but they wanted yours as well. And um, they made their choices. They were warned multiple times. You stood up for yourself multiple times. And now there's consequences involved. So um, I'm feeling somebody was cocky. Um, they were cutting. They were blunt and direct and possibly didn't even know the story. Um, and they were concerned about money and their own personal security. And they were so heart heart stone heart like grinchy heart that they were convinced that you were in the same situation many of us do that we assume that others are at the level we are at and when many of us are encountering others that are less healed than ourselves we'll encounter people like that but they'll remain they'll remain unhealed if everybody acts in a way that's unhealed with them right We've got to maintain our center no matter what comes at us. So we can't care about their approval if their heart is never going to unclench. We have to unclench our own heart and give our own approval to ourselves because otherwise we will be their prisoner, trying to please them, trying to, or allowing and tolerating them to switch our reality and to manipulate our behavior because they'll know how to get it done. Do your work, then step back you'll know that your work is done. 63, <clears throat> act without doing. Work without effort. Think of the small as large and the few as many. Confront the difficult while it's still easy. Accomplish the great task by a series of small acts. The master never reaches for the great. Thus, she achieves greatness. When she runs into a difficulty, she stops and gives herself to it. She doesn't cling to her own comfort. Thus, problems are no problem for her. Right. It's about that, like the computer thing, like being stuck in traffic. It's like um, we're, we're aware that there's no perfection. And so knowing that, we know that we can't get the green lights every single day, every time. We're going to get the green lights here when it's acceleration time. But then over here when it's the season of, well, there's this, let's use the obvious, there's car crash ahead. We're going to give you all the red lights so that you're not going to be in the midst of that car crash. And with family or loved ones dynamics or things at work, trust that if it looks like the bad guy is winning, that there are forces at work behind the scenes that are helping those other people to start spilling their cups um, in front of the people that need to witness what they what they'll say, um, and if somebody keeps on, you know, sharpening their cutting words against you and talking to everyone and their brother, eventually some someone's going to say, you know, this person is so negative. They talk about everybody. I bet they talk about me as well. I think I'm not. I'm not going to spend as much time in proximity that with that person right and it's whatever your personal message is so take that as you will it's just that we need to kind of step back from overdoing someone or something has led us to believe that we need to go 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 uh hustle hustle and there is so much more that can be accomplished when we relax and we take the few minutes to deep breathe because deep breathing actually resets your entire uh, nervous system. It resets your digestion. It resets your moods. It resets your spiritual calibration and your energetics. Um, where if you're scattered, do, 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 it's like your energy is literally away from you in 10 directions. And that's why you can't remember anything. Because there's nothing inside. <laughs> 
You need to draw all of that energy back into your core for a few minutes, longer and longer at a time, so that you can center and say, okay, divide and conquer what needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done but I want to do. And then at some point, that back burner needs to come up to the front burner. We can't do everything for ourselves every day, but if we don't take the time to unstress ourselves, we're creating sickness, disease, unconsciousness, uh, repressed energy to that ex extreme level can create things like high blood pressure, it can cause heart attacks, it can cause cancer, you know, and I don't mean to say this to scare anyone. Um, I received this message a long time ago and this individual told me that if I didn't change my ways I would I would get an autoimmune disorder that was something that didn't heal and I'm like autoimmune I am so protected I take care of myself and I just don't get sick and I was in my 20s and of course I was bulletproof and then a few years later after burning the candle at both ends again and again I did I, I had shingles and I didn't know what that was it's the adult form of chickenpox it's an autoimmune disorder. And so now my body gives me a very tingly reminder when I get super uber stressed and I know better than to break out because I don't have health insurance here. And so you need to handle that by learning how to, how to transmute stress without addictions, without medicines, I mean, not everybody can do that. If you need help regulating, I'm not advocating for getting off of your prescription medication. I'm advocating for not self-medicating with harmful substances and, <clears throat> and overdoing and treating yourself like some kind of pinball. Yeah. Treat yourself with the respect that you would want your best friend to, um, to tell you, right? And, the way you'd want your best friends to care for themselves. There's a change necessary. You need to uh, communicate your limitations to somebody. And there's other people who have been communicating in very blunt, sharp, passionate, aggressive ways, but you're provided and protected for, and, and you're on the right track. You're on a mission here. And all of this is actually spiritual gold that you're, you're spinning that lead into gold, gold every day. So, Take care, and yep, material concerns under the deck with inner child falling on the floor. So take those messages, whatever resonates, and leave the rest. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you once again for joining, sharing your vibe, helping me to grow the channel and to get those messages out there to whoever needs to hear them. So thank you again. Take care, and I don't think I'm doing those uh, Zodiac specific readings today, so it's family day today, and I'll probably do those on Monday. Thank you so much. Bye for now.